welcome back to the potting bench please if you haven't subscribed want to do that now today i'll be discussing about vanilla planifolia this is commonly known as the west indian vanilla this is the vanilla plant which the vanilla essence which you use for cooking baking brewing and all sorts of beverage and ice creams it comes from this is a very important plant so I'll have to do this in two parts. This will be video part one, where we will just explore what the vanilla is and how to propagate it. Welcome. A little background on the vanilla and the bottom of it. So vanilla originates from Mexico and parts of Central America. In the wilderness, it grows wild. The plant, the vine can reach up to 75 to 100 feet high if it has actually a place to climb but in plantation or cultivation you don't want them that much of a vine so you just maintain and keep it to like 10 feet high max and this way it's easier for operation so this is a vanilla vine um, it grows it's a straight vine which has alternate leaves the leaves when I say alternate leaves, that means on this side gets one leaf, the other side gets another leaf, the other side, it's like that. They alternate when going up. Everywhere where there is a leaf, we call it a node. So it has a node on every leaf. And being an orchid, it's an epiphytic orchid. So it's an epiphytic vine. That means it shoots out roots which don't really depend on the soil for anchorage. These are modified roots, so they are epiphytic roots. They look like any other orchid, epiphytic orchid you can see. Now, <clears throat> in growing vanilla, you want to put a trellis on it so that it anchors itself and keeps growing. Now, this one vine won't give you too many pots when you're gonna grow it. You may want to divide and then pot it and then take care of those seedlings until when you actually have enough of them to start up if you want to do this in a commercial way. If you just want to have one vanilla plant at home, that's fine too. You can just use one vine. But regardless, if you want to propagate this vine, you will follow these steps. So when you have a vanilla vine, uh, the best practice, let's say you acquire these vines from somewhere and you have like a longer vine like this one and you wanna multiply this into a couple of different plants. Remember this, it's gonna take you up to three to five years to get whatever I'm gonna cut here to actually have a vine which is productive. So be mindful of that before you start any project like this. If you, but the beauty of it is you can just keep the vine itself growing. It's still a nice beautiful foliage plant. And at some point it's gonna flower and then from the flower you can pollinate it and get your vanilla beans and then use them for whichever way you want to use them but if you have a plantation or you want to establish this from a nursery you follow these steps and then you can multiply them and have a lot of plants and then use those plants for whatever you want to use them for. now you have a vine that long um, as i said before every leaf is a node so we want to count seven nodes here one two three four five six seven the point of counting seven is i will remove two leaves from down here and retain one two three four five so i'll cut it at the seventh node and i will use this one as my first proper always remember to see where the top heads this way when you put it in a pot you will actually know and realize like, oh, this is the top. The plant will be growing, going up. So the upside up basically. Um, and that's just my arbitrary number. You can do, and it, it has real no botanical significance on it. You can do two pot, you can do two nodes, one node, three nodes, it doesn't really matter that much. The most important part is every single node here will give you roots, enough of them. And so forth and so forth. So, I take this one here will be our demonstration cutting for today. You don't have to do five knots. If you don't have enough material, you can just do three knots. One, two, three, cut it. 
one two three cutting i have enough here this is why i'm doing this one thing to notice is if the plant is matured it will have these aero roots these aero roots have two functions the first one is anchorage so the plant can anchor itself wherever it wants to climb and the second purpose which is what roots do is for absorption so it can absorb moisture from the atmosphere that's the epiphytic that's why this plant is an epiphyte the whole reason we are putting this is to make sure we establish way more roots here so the plant can anchor itself first in the soil this way it establishes itself and starts vining without having any issues and it's easier to transport and it's easier to actually go and transplant and it will have its own like a nice good starting because of its epiphytic tendencies but at the same time we want that the, uh, the tissues here to make actual roots what we do is we want to remove the lower i'll take the one there and probably i'll take two of these so i will make sure these two nodes these two nodes are going to be buried into the soil and i want to make my soil a little bit more epiphytic so we use orchid bark half of that half of this and regular potting soil i will do half of that so that will give me a half and half mixture which if i mix it nicer because i want it to be to have as much aeration as i possibly can but in the uh, at the same time i want my plant to have um, places where roots can actually develop so it will develop more roots underneath here than it will if i was just leaving it in the um, wet environment or wet air so if i get this nice mix of 50 percent back and 50 percent regular potting soil and i already have my two nodes there um, all i can do now is make sure i bury both the two nodes which i have i will probably at this point i'll just take off the old um, roots one thing which needs to happen here if you are fancy and you want to make like a nicer presentation first you can use a trellis because you are making a vine so you may want to use a trellis if you don't have a trellis use a stake if you don't have one stake to make your plant grow just make sure it's really firm in the soil and let it hang like that what will happen later is at the very top where i cut it the other cutting we left that too can be potted so that will be the bottom and you can start that one to keep going other pots but in there there is that node that's where the new growth will start coming up so i want to go fancy and i will just start by the trellis put a trellis put a little soil in and then put my plant and make sure all the nodes are all the way down there the two nodes which one is going all the way down and the other one is going to be just hanging in the middle you don't need to bury these roots you can if you want it doesn't matter and then make sure you bury the whole thing in firm it make sure it's firm and the soil is really around the actual node and roots which you remove make sure you have soil all over the place it's firm this way the trellis itself and the vine make sure it's all the soil in there and try to manipulate it in such a way it stands so there you have a standalone seedling this guy will start vining up going that way this is a small stake or a small trellis for such a heavy vine i'm just putting it there so that it can start vining by the time i want to transplant this to wherever i want i don't need this and i'll be taking the plant out of the pot anyway by then it will have established the roots and it will have established the more foliage here and start growing up it grows as one single climber but at some point it's gonna branch out and start branching and doing its thing so <clears throat> that's where you have the um, an actual vanilla seedling established 
after the seedling is established, this place, you see these valves, are, it's actually a misting system. This is where I just lay down all the uh, cuttings and proper use. But I leave it here so it can get enough moisture. I just turned this off now because of filming. This way I can have, I don't want to get splashed by water all over the place. But I do still have a hose here. So all I can do now is make sure it's really wet and moist. And we will have seedling ready to start developing itself. Now, being an orchid and being an epiphyte and having all these aerials which are modified it absorbs more moisture from the atmosphere this means you need it in a high humidity area so you want to put your seedlings in a place where there is enough humidity if you have resources and you have a nice um, misting system even better but if you don't just make sure if you are living in a very hot climate you wet them at least three times a day but just make sure it's nice wet moist and humid the secret is humidity 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 that's how you get your seedling to start so when vanilla grows if you give it a wall, it will attach itself. Those aerial roots we are talking about, you can see they act as anchorage. They can embed themselves in the material you give them to grow. This one is growing on a wall. Sometimes you may need to support it so that it doesn't fall because the plant can become a little too heavy. If you go down here, you will see why we don't we really start establishing roots just for the sake of getting the plant growing. But as soon as it starts vining, you don't really need roots out there. You just need roots aerially. This way the plant can absorb moisture through the stem and through the roots. Um, this is one part of where you can see how many aerial roots are attaching themselves. This is just growing in a rough wall surface. Here, also in mimicking the wilderness, you can see if you leave it unruly, it becomes really unruly and it becomes a really big, tall vine. All that up there is a vanilla vine and it comes all the way down there. So it goes behind the wall. So you can see it starts smaller with very few vines and then it branches up as it goes higher, it keeps going and going and going and going. If you provide it with fancy, nice wooden trellises, it will still do the same thing. The roots will find a place to anchor themselves. They will anchor themselves really good and they will keep going and the vine is gonna grow and grow and keep going and keep going and it's gonna go all the way as far up as it can get itself to. But the important part is the roots will be acting as anchorage and the plant really underneath doesn't need that much. Now that we have established what a vanilla actually is and how to take cuttings of it and how to propagate it and how to take care of it until when you can reach a point where you want to pollinate it and when it flowers you can get your vanilla pods or vanilla beans thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed it and if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet please do so you can like this video and drop a comment if you have any questions leave them on the comment section Thank you very much and have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye.